Okay. okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this uh, New Market School Board meeting on February the 16th, 2012. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And with that, Melissa, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Thank you. I'll continue by reading our mission statement. The Newmarket School District is committed to the highest standards of quality education by creating a safe and successful learning community that embraces diversity and responds to the social, emotional, intellectual, and physical needs of every child. We are dedicated to fostering links to the broader community to ensure that students develop lifelong skills, enabling them to be contributing and productive members of society. Uh, again, welcome everyone. A couple things before we move on. Um, Dr. Hayes is home sick this evening. He's been uh, ill for a few days and we wish he's feeling better shortly. We have Pat Ballantyne, our curriculum coordinator, sitting in for him tonight. And um, Kelly Foster is also home recovering from an illness as well. So we wish her, Kelly, if you're watching, go to bed. <laughs> um, uh, but hope you're feeling well soon. Um, so with that, Pat, would you like to, uh, you to meet, to meet you at the podium and we'll talk podium. about uh, the recognition? I'm going to assume that you can hear me on the speaker just because I'm shorter. Um, while we were all getting ready preparing dishes for Super Bowl Sunday, on February 4th, which is the Saturday preceding that, we had a group of young ladies and young men and two coaches who decided they would take the plunge um, to help out with Special Olympics here in New Hampshire. Um, we raised $5,836, awesome. um, which is a great amount, and they should be very proud. They jumped into 43 degree temperatures to uh, raise that money for us, and I'm sure they're very glad that they're back and warm. Um, so we've decided to recognize those young men and young ladies who did that, as well as the two coaches. I'm just going to read all of the names. When I'm done with the names, would you come up? We have a small gift for you, and then we'll take a few minutes to have the board congratulate you, mingle with the crowd, and you can go on your way. Those students who participated in the fourth annual high school penguin plunge, um, we have as you can see, not all 24 or 23 here. We have a math meet that's going on. We had basketball practice, as I understand. We have all kinds of things, the very active. <coughs> Danielle Hunan, Ashley Palmer, Jenna Jarvis, Stephanie Bean, Brad Ricard Hunter, Ashley Hodgton, Haley Veristro, Jeff Carmichael, Jessica Selling, Aaron Coffey, Mackenzie Badger, Kate Rossi, Lacey Dickinson, Christian Fillion, Gabrielle Diaz, Daniel Smith, Robbie Wheeler, Kelsey Madej, Alex Chase, Emma Valinsky, Ashley Fillion, Trevor Kefaber, and Shaylee, I'm probably not going to do this well, Cucinata, Cucinata. And our two staff members who braved that chilly water were Jill Breton and Christina Cochran. Big round of applause for them, please. I'm going to give you this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. You get one of these. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Coming out of the water dry. Thank you for yes. making the, the, the great. How's the water? Thank you. Mr. Yeah. Carmichael. Nice <laughs> <laughs> and we'll make sure the others get this. It's awkward. <laughs> 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 I know, we've been through the list like with fine tooth comb, but I'm sure they'll tell us if we missed anything. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> well, thank you. So we'll take a brief moment. We'll Five minute break. and um, <laughs> go off the air for a second and uh, give the board a chance to come down and, and, and ask how, how uh, warm how it was. was it? it wasn't cold until we were running out. I think that was the hardest part. Yeah, yeah. 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 
nerves. Who needs nerves? So I trained myself really for quick. this move. And I when they came it. out at 10, the clock said 30 minutes. There was still 30 minutes for them to wait outside before they actually went in the water. So they ended up cutting off 10 minutes, and it was still a long, long time. Yeah. Swim around? <laughs> Do some body surfing. <laughs> Last year was really cold. Really, really bad. So this year was, the, and there was no snow on the beach either, so you weren't hurtling over <laughs> snow. That was nice. No cutting up with feet. Sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds cold and terrible. Sounds awful. I don't like the cold. So it's just not my my dream. Then. What? That would not have been relevant. No. She almost. Did I almost. I almost signed up, and then I couldn't. You got <laughs> cold feet. I did. I got cold feet. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay. Well. <laughs> You've already done it. Mm -hmm. Some of you have already done it more than once, right? Yep. Yeah, this yeah, is, this is the third year for... Yeah. Yeah. This is the third year. Well, this is the fourth year. We've actually done it in Newmarket and done it all four years. So this is the fourth year that we've done it, and it's the fourth high school one. So we have been a part of it all four years. I started... John Bridal did it first, and then I did. I took over. Oh, Bridal. I didn't plunge this year, but I, I plunged the last two years. They all want me to plunge again next year. <laughs> I did my time. I was sick though, so I only went into like yeah. the knees because I was pregnant. Yeah. Well, get more sick. Speaking of bridal, you guys are doing Mr. Newmarket, right? Nope. I don't think so. You're not? Alex, come, you have to. You're in student <laughs> council. <laughs> you have to. So I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> Sounds like it's in that uh, student not. report coming right up. Oh, it is. <laughs> it is. It's right at the end because yeah. it's the most important. Right. Thank you guys. Thank well, you. That's awesome. Yeah. Good job, nice everyone. Job. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> Jeffrey. Jeffrey, you can have. Oh, she take my notes, huh? Thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye. Bye. It's not I know, contagious. Right. I went to the doctor. I'm good. All right. Excellent. Um, so, you, you, was it you that mentioned the board should jump in next year? I think either the chair or the vice chair. I'm not sure. We'll have to talk about it. I'd do it. Sure. It'd be fun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think she just did. <laughs> I think she did. Get her she, did I may not be voted in, so. Uh, <laughs> is that part of Moving your right along. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the point in our agenda that we uh, welcome visitors to make public comments if they'd like to do so. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Joanne Lazarus here speaking on behalf of the New Market Teachers Association. At the last school board meeting, Dr. Hayes made a proposal to solve the issue of the lost day at the junior senior high school. At that time, the NTA had been informed but had not approved the proposal. Since the meeting, the NTA has decided to approve switching the professional development day of March 16th to a regular school day for the junior senior high only. Due to the additional work of preparing for NEAS, the teachers at the junior and senior high received a minimum of an additional 14 hours of professional development this year, thus meeting the contractual obligation of the district to provide professional development hours towards recertification. So we appreciate the board's willingness to be flexible and understanding of this trying time to the staff at the junior and senior building. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to make a comment? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to our minutes from our last meeting. We would like to make a motion regarding the minutes from February the 2nd. <coughs> I make a motion to accept the minutes from February 2nd. Thanks, I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Corrections or clarifications? Kelly's not here. So. Kelly's not here, so <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> all right, so I'm hearing none. All those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
believe we had non-public that evening also. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, non-public meeting minutes from the, the February 2nd meeting. Third. February 3rd? It was it was the, the second. It's, a, I believe, a typo on okay. the minutes. Okay, thank you. <coughs> so was that a second, Chet? I, I wasn't here. Oh, second. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor who are present, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And one abstention. That, and that's in the case of both minutes, right? All right. Um, to committee reports, but before Melissa, I give you the floor, I'd like to once again thank you for uh, singing at the deliberative session. You it was per it was awesome. It was oh, excellent. Thank you. I think you you impressed everyone in the room. Thank so it was you. Really yeah. fantastic. Thank you. So with that, oh, yeah. you, you, <laughs> can, you can take a solo or sing the student report or or uh, deliver more. Uh, Presentation modes up to you. Okay, I'll I'll speak it tonight. Okay. I'm a little sore. Um, so boys basketball is 14 and 2 and girls basketball is 8 and 9. Indoor track is now over and I think they had a pretty good season from what I hear. Uh, last night we had our poetry out, out loud competition, our school wide competition in which Colin McKinney won and he will um, represent Newmark in the regional competition. And Saturday, this Saturday from 5 to 7 we have our first chili festival which is going to benefit that eighth grade DC trip and um, next week is mules fever week which is put on by a combination of salt and student council and they just wanted me to say the days so Monday is support a boys basketball player Tuesday support a girls basketball player Wednesday wear black Thursday wear red and Friday is New Market Pride Day and we're looking for um, participation from both schools um, from the junior high and the high school and then, if you can believe it, progress reports for quarter three come out on Monday, which is crazy. And um, <laughs> student council is putting on Mr. Newmarket, which is on March 13th, and it's a competition to win <coughs> the title of Mr. Newmarket. And <laughs> signups have started, so any people at home with boys in the high school, encourage them to do it. It's going to be really fun. And there's usually a good prize, like a Best Buy gift card or something. So. It's a good event. That's all I have. Excellent. Any questions for Melissa? <laughs> when uh, are we getting close to um, playoffs for basketball? Um, I don't know. They didn't tell me if we were. You gotta think it's gotta we be. We must be I think it's mid March. I want to say p when playoffs are, or early March, something like that. I think it's in March. All right. We'll stay tuned. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Thank you. Okay, Pat, do you uh, like to uh, share some superintendent's comments? Or? Um, we've already, of course, given kudos to the students and staff who participated in the um, Penguin Plunge uh, for Special Olympics. Um, this evening, Representative Marsha Moody will um, give you a little bit more information about current legislation and where, what, what's going on in Concord. Um, I did make sure that in your pack, packet that went out that you have the information from the last meeting and more that was sent to us from Representative Moody. Um, at the previous meeting, we were going to talk about the program of studies. We are still working on the program of studies and we hope to be able to present it to you in March, but I will tell you we've spent a quantity of hours looking at making sure descriptions are correct, um, rigor is in, the, in each description, and the expectations are clear about what's going on for course selection next year. We have some great electives that are being offered. Um, people are very excited about teaching them, and we want to see how everything fits into the <coughs> schedule. So I would say by the March meeting after vacation, we'll talk about that date in a few minutes. Um, speaking of March meetings, here we are. Um, Dr. Hayes wanted to mention that your meeting is during February vacation. 
um, and he didn't know if that created I, I can see Meg going yes mm -hmm. I won't be here okay I, you know what I won't be here what? <laughs> you don't have any kids in school anymore, I know. though. I know. So we're going away on a vacation for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Imagine. Good, good for you. So perhaps... We can you, talk about that when we get to the when calendar. When you get to piece. the calendar, okay. Um, it is not a problem for him. You could uh, probably go back. When we did the wellness policy, a question was raised about the following quote, loss of recess due to disciplinary issues is discouraged. Um, Although you did approve the policy, we knew at the time you'd have to go back and revisit it. That's the time. Mm -hmm. um, and we've invited Principal Scott Thompson and Food Service Director Linda Hopi here tonight to kind of join us for a discussion of that particular line. Um, Linda found recently in working with the U.S. Healthy School Challenge, which is promoted by the USDA, that the practice of taking away recess from students for disciplinary reasons is an obstacle to our participation in that program. And just aside, I did go to the Poetry Out Loud contest last night, and we had a record number of students participating. It was a very exciting evening. The band was good, the food was good, and the poetry was awesome. I was very proud of our students and our faculty that worked so hard to make that come up. Okay. Okay, thank you. Well, now you. I can do faculty. I have facilities. Faculty. Well, well, before you go, does anyone have any question on those items? Nope. All right. Then facilities it is. Um, the first thing is, on the district website, we've reorganized that tab that was about facilities. When you look at the district website, if you go now to the upper left-hand corner, we've organized all the information, all the schedules, everything about the facilities has been brought up to date, and we've kind of put it up there in the corner to actually improve your ability to access the information. Um, we've created a separate web page to simply list all the key documents, and it does make it easier to find the many documents and reports that we now have. Um, and secondly, the, the home page, which I just spoke about now, has that distinct menu on the left-hand side so that visitors can go directly to the key documents. Planning web pages are all right there. Um, and I tried it a couple of times this afternoon to make sure that it was user-friendly, <coughs> and it was. Um, the next facilities committee meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, March 7th at 5.30 p.m. in the downstairs town hall auditorium. Okay. Any questions about those? <coughs> I guess speaking, do you, Joan, have an update to give later about how the progress is going in yep. the building? So we can talk about that. Yep. All right. Excellent. Any other questions regarding facilities? <coughs> okay. Then on to our program. Um, as you know, we've invited our state rep representatives to to come uh, to speak to us. We've already had um, Adam Schrader and um, um, Russ Prescott. Thank you very much. I'm mental block for there for a second uh, they spoke at our last meeting and I'm pleased that we have Marsha Moody here this evening to uh, to speak to us so if you'd like to come up and we can hear what's what's new uh, from your perspective maybe we can have some some good dialogue well there are several things I'd like to uh, talk about tonight and <clears throat> bring you up to date on some of the latest things that have been happening in the house and the results thereof. Um, I passed out uh, this information from Bill Duncan uh, at one of the last meetings and I'd like to bring you up to date on uh, the current status of some of those things. It's the anti-public education agenda for the uh, 2012 session of the New Hampshire Legislature. And on the House floor Wednesday on the 8th, <clears throat> HB 1692 to abolish the university system office passed. And that was in HB 1413 and 1517, um, which opt out of New Hampshire no child left at a cost to New Hampshire public schools of $61 million. That was laid on the table for further discussion. And there will be need to be serious consideration of whether and how to request 
a federal waiver of the NCLB requirements, the waiver itself is substantial negotiation on which there has not been a consensus within the state up to this point. It will be important to determine quickly whether there is progress that can be made here. The only vote last Wednesday on the HB 1692 defunding the university system office, which passed 247 to 105. And uh, <clears throat> reducing the funding for public education, HB 1607 and SB 372 creating a school voucher program are the keystone legislation of this session. These companion bills would give a 90% tax credit to businesses that fund school vouchers and offset that cost with funds taken back from the local school districts. This is a large and complex program undergoing daily revision as the leadership pushes it through. If passed, it would cost the state government and the school districts tens of millions of dollars every year and move many thousands of children from public schools to private, religious, and home schools. The Department of Revenue Administration testifying on February 2nd to the House Ways and Means Committee on the voucher program said they could not begin to estimate the DRA's cost of administering such a program. Representative Ober, the vice chair of the House Finance Committee, said at the same February 2nd subcommittee meeting that the bill would cost at a time when leadership was committed to not spending money. She went on to say that this was significantly concerned about what this bill would do to the local school districts. But there's great pressure to move the bill along even if it is it is unfinished state. The next House Ways and Means Subcommittee meeting uh, was at 10 o'clock on uh, the 13th. Uh, the continuation of the Senate Education Committee hearing is at 1 p.m., and that was yesterday. The House Ways and Means Executive Session is scheduled for the same time, this Tuesday at 1 p.m. Now, the Executive Session is the voting session on the bill. So that is scheduled. HB 413 and HB 1517 would both opt out of the No Child Left Behind. And these bills, again, were laid on the table for further analysis. Uh, the effort to reach a waiver agreement with the federal government, uh, the Department of Education would be pretty involved. The waiver would surely lead to an increased federal role in teacher regulation and evaluation. New Hampshire Department of Education would have to spend a good deal of time developing a plan that would gain federal approval and the local buy-in. <clears throat> HB 1473, adjusting the adequacy formula further reduces fundamental state support for public education. When the current legislature took over last year, the key figure driving state support for education, the adequacy cost, was $921,443,751. The legislature immediately cut $152 million in state and school districts each year. If HB 1473 passes, adequacy costs will be reduced to $641,354,022, 30 percent less than when this legislature arrived. The Special Committee on Education Funding Reform held its public hearing on this bill in January the, on the 6th and a work session on February the 3rd. There are currently no further meetings scheduled. On February 8th, the Special Committee on Education Funding Reform issued a committee report referring the bill for interim study. This is probably the end of it for this session, though it could be brought back. CACR 8 makes state funding for public schools optional. <coughs> now, in the Constitution, the state Constitution says the state is obligated to fund public schools. 
but the CACR 8 would be a constitutional amendment. Uh, the several political subdivisions shall make adequate provision at their own expense for the schools, provided that the legislature may, not shall, may supplement that provision in the manner and degree that the legislature finds most beneficial to the general good. The public hearing on the House Education Committee will be on February 16th. The executive session will be at 10 a.m. on February 21st. Now, this passed first, uh, and the votes uh, were 479, uh, well, uh, the votes uh, did pass at first, and it, it was recommended. However, as a result of that, there was another vote that came up to recommit it. So it's recommitted to the committee, and they're going to study it again. So it is not final yet. But the first time, it did pass. And then there was a vote that superseded that that said to recommit it to committee for further study, and that's where it is right now. The CACR 12 alters the state obligation to fund public education. It passed the House in the last session, 252 to 113. The Senate Internal Affairs amended the bill and voted ought to pass on uh, the 1st of February. On the 8th of February, the Senate Internal Affairs Committee reported the bill out ought to pass with amendment at 4 to 1. Both progressive advocacy groups and the New Hampshire Families for Education which advocates for homeschooling and parents' rights are strongly against the CACR 12. Um, okay, it did pass the House and the Senate with an amendment. HB 1692, in this statement says, proposes to do away with the university system. Uh, that is an error. It proposes to do away with the chancellor's office. And that was voted out of the House Education <coughs> Committee on the second, ought to pass 12 to 4. And it was scheduled for the House floor on the uh, 8th of February. In the last session, the legislature cut 50 million from the New Hampshire University system. The House voted this bill ought to pass 247 to 105, mostly along party lines. But this is just to do away with the chancellor's office and to transfer all power to the board of trustees at the university. HB 1313, allowing school districts to offer higher education scholarships to high school pupils. Uh, this is a confusing bill. Uh, the public hearing in the House Education Committee was on the 7th, and executive session was scheduled on the 9th. And I do not have any further um, information on that particular bill. I talked to five different members of the uh, school committee yesterday, and uh, no one seemed to remember what the result of that uh, vote was. The next group is dismantling compulsory attendance. Having failed to abolish compulsory attendance, HB 595, lower the high school dropout age, HB 429, or end kindergarten, HB 631 last year, the legislature continues to, uh, to try to dismantle compulsory attendance in other ways. HB 1382 requires a warrant or permission of a parent to return a truant child to school and the parent's approval of an alternative plan for the child. This bill would go far to eliminate compulsory attendance. The public hearing in the House Education was held on the 2nd. The executive session for, with the vote was on the 9th. Now this one, when I talked to the, um, the head of the committee, did remember, and it was ITL'd, so that bill was killed. Uh, HB 1167 would repeal the 180-day school year. 
The public hearing in the House Education Committee was on the 26th of January, and the executive session was held uh, this Tuesday on the 14th, and the committee voted to keep the 180-day school year. Um, and that bill was on the regular calendar yesterday, and we agreed to, to kill the bill. The House as a whole voted on it, and I tailed that bill. Uh, legislative control over the school curriculum. HB 1712 would mandate that every school district in New Hampshire offer an elective course on the Bible. The public hearing in the House Education Committee was on the 2nd of February. The sole sponsor was uh, Representative Bergevin, uh, Republican from Manchester, who did not seem to understand the bill or the materials he had submitted to support it. This appears to be one of the many examples of legislation brought by political or religious groups hoping to take advantage of New Hampshire citizen legislature. The executive session is scheduled for the 21st, and that's when they will vote on that one. Uh, you can realize the implications of that. You would have to hire another teacher to teach that particular course if it's mandatory. <clears throat> HB 1148 would again require evolution to be taught as theory in public schools. The sponsors were uh, Representative Bergevin again. The public hearing before the House Education Committee was on the 14th, on Tuesday, and the executive session is go uh, was supposed to be held today. Uh, I wasn't in Concord today, so I did not know about if that executive session, how the vote turned out on that one, but it will probably be on the website pretty soon. HB 1516 requires a specific number of hours per day of English and mathematics instruction for pupils in kindergarten through grade three. The sole sponsor is the chair of the House Education Committee. The public hearing was on the 31st of January and on the 2nd of February executive session vote on the bill was canceled and Chairman Balboni named instead a subcommittee, which was to have a work session on the 7th. This pro uh, bill probably can't be realistically implemented and may not come out of subcommittee in the same form. The passage of HB 542, which enables a parent to object to the child's curriculum on any basis and negotiate with the school for an alternative, made the New Hampshire legislature an object of derision nationally. See on the website, Live Free, Die Dumb, The War on Education in New Hampshire. The follow-on bill, 1575, was ITL in the Education Committee. This bill was on the consent calendar uh, yesterday, and we agreed to the ITL to kill it. Uh, 1424, HB 1424, prohibits a school district from requiring that parents send their children to any school or school program or curriculum to which they are conscientiously opposed. This is a one-sentence bill. No school district shall compel a parent to send his or her child to any school or program to which he or she may be conscientiously opposed nor shall a school district approve or disapprove a parent's education program or curriculum. This bill is essentially the same original version of HB 542 and was supported by the House Education Committee 11 to 6 in that form last year. It then passed the House 197 to 148 before being modified in the Senate in its final form. The public hearing on 1424 before the House Education <coughs> Committee was on 2-7. The executive session for that bill is going to be on the 21st. HB 1457 is another one-sentence bill seeking to require a specific approach to teaching scientific inquiry. It requires science teachers to instruct pupils that proper scientific inquiry results not from committing to any one theory or hypothesis, no matter how firmly it appears to be established, and that scientific and technological innovations based on new evidence can be challenged, accepted scientific theories or modes. The public hearing in House Education Committee uh, was on the 9th. 
The executive session is going to be, well, it was uh, held today. Again, uh, I do not know the results of that one. HB 1403 would allow a parent to withdraw a child from a school that adopts the International Baccalaureate Program. The public hearing on House Education Committee was on the 26th of January, and the executive session, again, was supposed to be today. Again, I have no in further information on that one. Um, HB 1461, requiring schools to notify parents of an outside speaker and allow parents to opt the child out was voted out of the House Education Committee ought to pass with Amendment 17 to 0. The amendment made the bill essentially meaningless because it issues already covered in statute and school districts have policies in place on this issue already. Uh, it was on the consent calendar for the 15th uh, yesterday and it passed 17 to 0. Now there's something very interesting about this and because on the 14th I was invited to speak to the fourth grade class on the workings of this state legislature and how it functions. And uh, we had a really good time. We had a pretend legislature in the classroom. But since the teacher didn't inform the parents five days ahead of time that I was coming, essentially this made it against the law. So <laughs> this is one of those bills. Uh, I, I will say this, all of these bills so far that have passed the House still have to go through the Senate and they still have to go to the governor for his approval before they become law. But uh, some of these, uh, the, the Senate is now working on them, but in two weeks we have what we call crossover. And that's when all the House bills officially cross over to the Senate and all the Senate bills officially cross over to us and each house uh, votes on the other body's set of bills. And uh, then they will go uh, to the governor for signature or veto. SB 300, requiring charter schools to make available a free and appropriate public education to children with disabilities. The public hearing in the Senate Education Committee was on the 7th of February. Amendment is in process. The executive uh, session is unscheduled, and uh, I don't have any further information on that particular one. Dismantling the New Hampshire Department of Education, HB 219, it was passed by the House on the 5th of January, 214 to 110, and has not yet been taken up by the Senate. It would prohibit the State Board of Education from passing any rule other than those needed to meet the minimum federal standards without a voice of both houses of the legislature. HB 1713 abolishes the New Hampshire Department of Education. The public hearing on the House Education Committee was on the 2nd. The executive session will be held on the 21st. HB 1571 removes the authority of the Department of Education to monitor achievement of homeschool students. The public hearing in the House Education Committee was on the 25th of January. The bill was amended slightly and passed out of the House Education Committee with an opt to pass recommendation. This bill is, was on the consent calendar yesterday and it passed. Uh, HB 1360 allocates all Department of Education rulemaking authority to the House and Senate Education Committees. The bill was amended in the House Education Committee and passed the House um, on the 1st of February, 238 to 88. The Senate has taken no action. HB 545 giving the Home Education Advisory Council final approval authority over homeschooling rules. The bill was amended and passed out, passed out of the Education Committee, ought to pass 13 to 1. Uh, on the uh, uh, 10th, I mean on the 21st of October uh, last year. Now the bills that were on the consent calendar 
yesterday, again, for uh, the House, an education. The consent calendar means that uh, there was such an overwhelming majority on the committee that approved this or disapproved the bill uh, on their vote that it gets on the consent calendar. So it's voted just, uh, the whole calendar is voted at once. So these individual bills are not taken up by the House as a whole unless someone decides to pull it off the consent calendar. So these are the ones that were voted on as a group on the consent calendar. Uh, relative to the procedures for approval of plans, specifications, and cost of school building construction or renovation. This is HB 604. And <clears throat> uh, the vote on this, uh, let me read you. This bill sets in place a system in which submitted applications for school building aid are rank and ordered in accordance with criteria such as unsafe conditions, obsolete, insufficient or unacceptable facilities or mechanical and building systems, overcrowding and associated influence to instructional areas and programming, enrollment to projections and population shifts. The criteria to determine if a school district has made a reasonable attempt to accommodate maintenance and achieve the design life expectancy of building systems and components. A successful application will complete a rigorous review process involving the Department of Education, Administrative Appeal, if necessary, the School Building Authority and the State Board of Education. Now, uh, this passed out um, of committee and passed out of the House uh, with an auto pass um, vote. However, uh, we both know that the New Market High School and Junior High School certainly falls under this category. But the funding for uh, release to the various schools is still not going to be available until 2014. HB 1461, requiring school officials to notify parents of a class event involving an outside speaker and allowing parents to opt for their child not to participate in the class event ought to pass with amendment. That passed. HB 1571, relative to educational evaluation of homeschooled children, ought to pass with amendment. That passed. HB 1575, relative to alternate course selections for certain pupils. That was inexpedient to legislate. And that was in connection with the bill that said the parent could pull the child out of any class that uh, they disapproved of. And the second part of this was to have an alternate class set up and available. And that was, uh, that part of the bill was killed. So those, that's what passed out of the consent calendar yesterday. And the one that passed out of the regular calendar was HB 1162, establishing a committee to study the effects of compulsory school attendance on children and families. Now, the majority voted inexpedient to legislate or to kill that bill, and that was killed, and that was on the regular calendar. So that's what happened yesterday. Now, on past bills, um, what happens after there's a vice voice vote on many of the bills, what comes out is what they call the house record, the calendar journals. And it gives you the arguments for and against a particular bill, and it gives you how the house voted and individual members, how they voted. So if you want to know how Adam, Josh, and I voted on these various bills that came out, it's available in this calendar. Is that available online? It's on, um, I don't know if the house records available online, but the votes certainly are available online. And uh, I've marked up a couple of these if you're interested in seeing them that have to do with the uh, um, education votes that I just mentioned. Um, they're in this particular record. If I could get this back, I, I will give this to you and you could uh, 
pass it around to the committee members if you like and see how we vote it. Now, uh, again, when you read through, sometimes there's more than one vote on a bill. And uh, they'll say, uh, we vote on the amendment first. So then you can see how we voted on the amendment. And then the second vote, which will also be listed, is the bill as amended. So the, sometimes there'll be two votes on there. And uh, you'll see our, our votes on here. For instance, on, um, on the CACR relating to education, providing the legislation will have the power to authorize schools. Um, the amendment to this passage, adding the word exclusive before the right, takes the state completely out of funding for support and maintenance of teachers and shall make adequate uh, provision at their own expense for schools, provided that the sup uh, legislature may supplement that provision in a manner and degree that the legislature finds most beneficial to the general good. Again, that takes away the obligation of the state to fund public schools. So there's some things in here. If you would like this journal, I can leave it with you. I'd love to have a look. Okay. Thank you. Okay. But these come out about three weeks after the vote is taken because they have to print these. And uh, so it takes a while for some of these bills to be caught up on so you can see how we voted on them. But again, everything that is called for a roll call vote goes in the permanent record. So you can see how all of us voted on any of these issues. Great. That's a lot of uh, material and <coughs> that I find personally quite depressing. Yeah. Um, I do too. <laughs> Frankly, it's, um, uh, there seems to be a national agenda against public education. And I don't know where it's coming from or why. Um, yes, there are some statistics out there that the United States compared with other countries is not doing so well. But if you look at the universities and the graduates that are coming out of the university system throughout the country, we are rated as some of the highest in the world. So our public schools must be doing some good if this is the result of it. And um, the math and science courses are the ones, again, where we seem to be falling behind um, other countries in our, our public schools. But we can't be as bad off as the doomsayers say, as I said before, because we are so successful in our university system. Plus, we have so many foreign students coming to the United States wanting to study at our colleges and universities because of the programs they offer and uh, the, you know, the high caliber of faculty that they have at our universities. So, uh, yeah, it's depressing in some way, but there, I, I still have a lot of hope for the public school system. And uh, so many people that I know in my age group that were products of the public school system, I mean, we found it really enlightening and you know, it helped us uh, so much, and it's helping pulling people out of um, a, a, a particular cycle of uh, poverty and being <coughs> able to, to get jobs and, and go on. And uh, so the public schools are essential as far as I'm concerned, and I don't want to see them destroyed or to be defunded or... Um, other schools, for instance, this uh, voucher system and this uh, uh, business tax. That particular bill of offering businesses a reduction in their business tax if they offer scholarships to students, you know, that can go to any kind of school, uh, you know, private school or religious school. What that does by reducing their tax, it cuts out of the general fund 
something like $90 million. And that general fund is where public schools get their funding from the state. And, and by reducing one element of tax that we have, and we have so few sources of revenue, and I do have a couple of the bills here that if you're interested, um, that gives the fiscal note on them and how much it would cost the state in the long run. And uh, so many of these uh, programs sound good, and it sounds like, you know, might help some students. But again, um, on that particular business tax uh, reduction, it doesn't say that the scholarship has to go to particularly deserving students. Uh, like those that couldn't afford to go to school otherwise, uh, it can go to anybody. Yeah. And again, it's cutting state revenues that the schools definitely need. And we've cut so much out of the revenue system right now that the only alternative to keep schools going is going to be raising the uh, property taxes again because we have no other means of getting revenues in the towns and cities. So when they downshift these costs to the towns and municipalities, it's coming out of our pockets even more. So and taking that piece and coupling it with the removal of any sort of accountability for home education, it seems to me you're op offering a revenue stream to support someone to effectively not be getting a rigorous education. Exactly. Which, and reducing the amount of taxes that, that are available for the general public education good. So those things coupled together really scare me if that's the intent of the legislature to scare me away from supporting a constitutional amendment that gives the legislature essentially a free hand if that's, that's right. if that's if I'm interpreting it right to, that's, that's correct. to then further <coughs> defund as they see mm -hmm. fit with no bottom well this one of the arguments is well it gives local control but it doesn't <laughs> it puts the burden yeah. on the locals yeah. it, it doesn't give them any more control but it, it puts the burden on. For instance, on this uh, <clears throat> bill, this 1607 establishing an education credit against business profits tax, the fiscal note on that says fiscal impact. The uh, Departments of Education Revenue Administration state this bill will decrease state revenues by 15 million in fiscal year 2013, 18 million, 750,000, in fiscal year 2014, $23,437,500 in fiscal year 2015, and $29,296,875 in fiscal year 216. The Department of Education states this bill will increase state expenditures by 40000 in fiscal year 13, and um, yeah, and this bill will uh, says it will decrease local revenues uh, by 690,845 in fiscal year 15, 863,556 in fiscal year 2016, and decrease local expenditures by 690,845 uh, in 13 and so on but you can see how devastating that's going to be to the municipalities if that passes I can leave this with you with the fiscal notes too um, anyone want to have a look at that yes. and by um, again by taking away our eliminating the Department of Education and putting it in the hands of uh, a legislative committee. Uh, again, it all depends on who gets in the legislature, <laughs> whether they decide to, to help the schools or not help the schools, or what's going to be taught in the schools, or what rules are going to be set up for the schools. 
So again, trying to eliminate Department of Education is, I, I don't understand the rationale for that. Again, it's, they say local control. Mm -hmm. Any, um, as much as that's a showstopper, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you follow up with? Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Thanks you very much. Marcia, if, if we're interested in getting a hold of you to get some further questions just offline as individual, what's the best way to contact you? Um, offline? Well, oh, it, yeah. should we call you on the telephone, oh, via email, no, no, which no, is, no, what's no. The, the most easy way to get a hold of you? I'll give you my card. Uh, okay. I, I, like to, I like to make a suggestion and get it back in March sometime and again give us another report in March. Sometime around the middle of March, that would be okay with you. In terms of how somebody's to see, bills. to yeah. see where to the see how this is turning in. over. Um, would that be too soon? Or if you could even email us. Or April. Yeah. Um, I was thinking um, by April we may have some of the the votes on what the Senate has done to our bills that we've passed. Could we have you back on in April? Yeah. Oh, I'd love to have. You. Uh, except on the 13th. <laughs> I won't be available on April 13th. Okay, that's well, great, great. That's excellent knowledge. Okay. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you. All right. Well, anything in contrast is. Uh, is a light subject. Um, next, we have a discussion of our wellness policy and how that relates to uh, a grant application. We've got Linda Hopi here this evening. Thanks for coming, Linda. Oh, thank you. For those who don't know, Linda's our food service director. Yeah, this is my favorite thing to do, too. <laughs> Ours, too, so you know, we're all in the same boat. We're all here. Well, the USDA Food and Nutrition Service has established the Healthier U.S. Challenge to recognize schools that have improved their school environment with nutritious foods, physical education, and nutrition education. I've been working on this since September, and during my January review of the wellness policy, the wording, loss of recess due to disciplinary issues, is discouraged. That bumped me out. Um, their feeling is recess has become more important than ever, um, and it should also be viewed as an opportunity for students not only to engage in physical activity, but also to learn about building their character, developing cooperation skills, and practicing social interaction. Since elementary schools only offer phys ed, I guess you'd say, once a week, recess has in fact become the main outlet for the school-aged child to participate in any physical activity. And a lot of kids do you know, this is the only time they do it. They don't even go outside anymore. So I think as school administrators, we are kind of uniquely positioned to influence and direct growth of healthier school environments. And you guys have the authority to make that decision, you know, without having the child being disciplined for, you know, loss of recess. And a lot of times, also by the time the child gets out there, the time, you know, by the time the coat, the boots, then get back in, it's, it's a long, it's not much time to be out on the playground. And it really is, for a lot of kids, the only time they are out and playing. So I'd like you to consider changing the wording. Is also the legislation changing? <laughs> there is. I talked to um, Mary Jo McClarney from the USDA yesterday, and in September there's going to be some very strict regulations about what your wellness policy can and cannot say. She seemed really pleased with ours. Apparently, you all had done a lot of really great work on that, and in just looking at it quickly, she feels that there won't be much that we'd have to really tweak with ours. With, you know, no food as a reward. You guys were already on board with that, that you guys were very much ahead of the curve. Yeah, by a long shot. And just so you know, for the physical education part of this challenge, we are ahead 
for the nutrition education part, we are also ahead. Um, the food part, as you notice, the menus have done a really drastic changing. Everything is very well, I guess, specified. And that's part of that challenge that everything is very crystal clear. It's, it's a tough challenge. Um, three schools dropped out yesterday hmm. out of 10. There's only two schools in the state right now. One is Exeter and one is Nashua that have met this challenge. And apparently it's been out since about 2004. So in order to participate in this program, what's inconsistent in, in our policy is the one line in on the last page of the policy right. under Section B, Recess, uh, Paragraph 2, Loss of Recess Due to Disciplinary, is disciplinary Issues is Discouraged. Um, so. Um, I guess I'd be curious to, to hear what um, Mr. Thompson might have to say about if we were to strike that language, how does that change things? What um, are there are there activities now that aren't uh, or that that regularly are leaving kids without the opportunity to, to go to recess? Is it a common form of discipline? So if you could speak to those things in general, that'd be great. Sure. Um, we certainly, as I think everyone is aware, have a huge support for the wellness initiatives in our building. Um, the teachers, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm also fighting a cold for eight days now. <clears throat> um, the teachers do many things above and beyond um, what's required of them to promote wellness not only in nutrition but in physical activity we've had a walking club i think this is our third year of having it which is totally run by teacher volunteers you know and the, they take the kids out we have a cross-country program we offer many um, more after-school activities than many schools we just had our big jump rope that had 180 students jumping so um, <coughs> we see this as really important. But the point that was made about recess is it's also a social event. So um, I talked to the staff about um, recess loss at the last faculty meeting on February 7th. And I said, what are the reasons that students would lose recess? I'm certainly familiar with what's in the handbook. And um, there were really three reasons. One is, they sometimes lose recess for purely instructional reasons. Students need extra help, so the teachers can take five minutes and say, let's just go over that, aside from the other students. That's not really, uh, you know, a, a, um, punitive in any way. <clears throat> sometimes if a student is absent, they need to get caught up, and that's the most efficient way to do it. Teachers do a lot of that during the school day, but sometimes the student needs one-on-one. -on -one. The other is, I would call, disincentives for, um, for compliance. Um, so that if a student has not done their assigned homework, they, the teachers try to have them do it during the day, but they really need to do it in order to be caught up. So teachers sometimes do uh, use recess for that. Or, or again, a part of the recess. It can be only five minutes. If they don't get their classwork done, I heard teachers say at the meeting that more often than actually taking away recess, they use it as, again, um, an incentive, you know, and say, I'd rather you have finished that now than have to stay in for recess, and that gets the kids doing it. So it is used in that way. Um, and the other is for uh, behavior very often, and this is important, behavior that occurs in the social setting at recess. We know how much time we've spent on our bullying programs and on um, teaching kids pro-social skills. So um, I want to bring your attention to a couple other policies that, that are impacted by a decision in this one policy, which is wellness. Um, I've given you a copy of policy JKB, 
which says a school administrator or teacher may detain a student for disciplinary reasons during the school day. I highlighted that one line. And it also allows for after school detention. As you can well imagine, for elementary students, that's a pretty uh, big task, not only for the teacher, but again for the parents, because they have to come and pick them up. Um, and the other is policy JLDBA, which says that it, it, it talks about a wide range of um, things for behavior management and intervention. And um, there's a highlighted line <clears throat> that exclusion from the classroom should be the disciplinary action of last resort. I think that's a sound educational policy because taking a student, for example, for in-school suspension, that's really high up on our, you know, steps of behavior of uh, interventions taken because we recognize that education is primarily about education and taking a student out of the classroom has a big effect. The last thing I've shared with you is the pages from our uh, NES student handbook. And as you can see, uh, major offenses, which are on the second page, talks about things which are really quite extreme, violence, threats of destruction of property, and those kinds of things that would fall under the Safe Schools Act. Those are pretty serious offenses and thankfully don't occur that often at the elementary school. But uh, they do sometimes. But all of the other things do include having students have a bench at recess in step one, for example. Um, in step two, that the teacher, not the administration, but the teacher would assign one or two recesses. Um, they can repeat step one and just, you know, reteach the student, those kinds of things. But teachers do sometimes, as according to the handbook, assign indoor recess for behavior that occurred either at recess or in the classroom. So I just wanted to share that while uh, the other thing I'd like to share is this before I make that statement is that we all know that um, students who have misbehavior, if we can help them change their behavior by without taking away recess, that's a win-win. Because those students who have a hard time attending during a classroom setting are the ones often who most benefit from physical activity. We would get that. We really know that. So if we can, if a teacher can redirect and not take away recess, that's always the first choice. If they can do a brief timeout or send them out of the um, classroom with a blue slip, as we call it, for a 10-minute timeout, they'll always try those things first. But sometimes a loss of recess is the best choice. So I guess I, and supported by um, many other policies. I guess that's in sum. Uh, what we talked about. Okay. Pat, do you have anything you want to add to the subject? In looking at, I guess, recess, it's not long. You're right. By the time we get, especially this time of year, by the time you get the boots, the hats, the coats, mittens, and the coat on and zipped up without getting the chin caught, um, there isn't a whole lot of time left. Um, it is important that they get that physical time. I, I see where we have a lot of particular pieces of policy that affect it as a behavior. Um, for me, recess is about, if, if you're going to lose recess, it's for something that happened at recess. It's not homework, it's because some, there was some kind of behavior issue or something at recess. Um, you could <coughs> take that line right out of the policy. Mm -hmm. um. So that would, I mean, that would simplify certainly the, this uh, wellness policy um, if we were to do that. The, as this is a policy and a policy modification, I don't, I don't know what sort of time table you're on, but. Um, to it. Have, this is like the first time through, so it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. you know, it's very hard. 
So the next time through, they're going to make it even harder because the um, federal regulations are changing. So the whole thing is going to change also. So if we were going to do a policy revision, I guess is where I'm going, is we would need to yeah, make this a first read and then at our next meeting um, we would have the opportunity to vote on any, any changes, which then gives others in the community the opportunity to weigh in on, on language changes. Um, any other board members have any thoughts on removing that line or um, the, the general concepts of recess and it seems discipline. like we had we had discussions on this we when, did, when we yeah. talked about this but I don't see any problem with removing it okay it um what what about the the handbook though the student handbook I and mean, do we then need to that, that could, needs to be revised. Okay. What, we'll need to do the same there. Yeah. That could be changed. I would think that we would. Mm -hmm. May I add one comment? Sure. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify. Please. I think that it isn't simply that there's a line in the policy that says it should be discouraged and that's viewed as weak. What they actually need, as I understand it, for the grant <clears throat> is a statement that recess may not be taken away for disciplinary reasons. That's a much stronger statement. Mm -hmm. That's what I understood, and I could be mistaken about that. So it isn't just leaving it gray. It has to be clear for the purposes of the grant that we may not do that. Um, well, that's a, a little bit of a higher hurdle then um, simply eliminating the line what's that it's, it's higher than simply eliminating absolutely the line. and I'm not sure it makes sense to say Johnny you're misbehaving here at recess I can't send you inside but when you get inside we're going to discipline you in some other manner that's that's not a logical consequence for acting out in the playground, I guess, it seems to me. But so I can't, I can't fathom how that would, that's the intent of that program. When um, Mary Jo looked at it, it was the disciplinary issue is discouraged. That was the part that really, she said, just took me right out of the comp, out of the grant writing just and I'm wondering if I contact her there's another part on page 17 about if you didn't do your homework you could do it during recess well that's not disciplinary um, maybe I she should maybe if I get a letter from her we can have it a little more clear exactly what she needs because she had basically said that if the school could write me a letter saying that they don't do that loss of recess due to disciplinary I could continue on um, but once again it will still have to probably be looked at in September mm -hmm. looked at with three in with because of, of the changing in the um, just the regulations, the regulations. Oh, new regs will come out new regs that, I see. that won't allow you to have it you know you won't be able to just use recess as a discipline so it's only according to, to well, to according to wellness, to but according to the wellness right. regulations. Right. I feel like we're put between them. Mm -hmm. A rock and hard place. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a. I have a question. Um, the other schools that are still in the running for the grant, are they in their wellness policy? Do they? They don't have a line like that. It is no. will not. It is not. Be, it's okay. Says, and Epping right now is actually still working on theirs, so she's kind of in a holding pattern. Um, they had their first wellness th uh, meeting for the policy the other night, and she's continuing on because she's hope you know that's what theirs is, is hoping to read. So the goal of the grant is to not use recess as, as, a, a, as a disciplinary okay. action. Right. And it's also not a goal to promote anarchy during recess. True. So <laughs> I guess that's. 
that's, that's the, the rock line we're going and then right. the hard place is you know mm -hmm. how do you right <coughs> educate in the environment yeah you know causing havoc on the playground right natural discipline What do we get with Wait. the grant if we get oh, sorry. I'm sorry. If you like this, could you come up get, to the What do we get, Joanne? We, get to, I mean, we actually get a national recognition. I get a plaque. We, the school gets a plaque. Um, Tom from the USDA will actually come to the school. It, it's a, financially, I only will get $500 for the program. But it's a, it's a big bragging right that your school accomplished this, you know, that it's meeting and exceeding more than what just barely needs to be done, you know, that the school has, you know, they're meeting all, all these regulations that, mm -hmm. you know, for physical education, for nutrition education, for my part in it. Your goal is to get healthier students. Right. No, That's the goal of the program. Yeah, yeah but. And they're, they're shooting. I want to uh, the end result. Yeah. They're, they're obviously, the USDA is obviously shooting for all 50 states to embrace this and all schools, all public schools in all 50 states to embrace this. So Linda took this on. Uh, we went to a workshop, and Linda took this on because she thought, wow, we're doing so great in a lot of areas. If we could get recognized for how great we do for all the work that the wellness committee does and that the nurse does and the, the garden and all these great things we do, if we could get that kind of recognition, it would be proud for the school, proud for the students, proud for the parents. I mean, Scott went on and on about how many wellness things they do, activity things they do. So that was the goal. I mean, there's a recognition, but it was the whole school population would be recognized for doing a great job with wellness. And, and the administrators that work so hard on it. Meg, please. Um, I, uh, I think this is a... a a great idea and I'd like to explore it more. My question is we have to deal with the pragmatics of the recess and if a student is having difficulty at recess and I agree with Mr. Chair like no we can't we can't address it now. So I'd be interested in talking to the schools that obviously would have the same set of problems um, <coughs> at recess with kids having behavior problems. How have they um, dealt with this issue? What strategies are they using? What is what are their disciplinary measures like? before we make a decision I mean we, we need to yeah. we need to be able to to deal with the behaviors in the moment but we'd, we'd also like to be acknowledged for rising above and beyond expectations for wellness so if we could do both that would be great so if we could get some more information from those schools like Nashua or Exeter Exeter um, I think that would be helpful in our decision make or my decision making and yeah that makes sense we don't need to invent anything new. Right. <laughs> Especially if someone's already using something that works. Right. And if, if that's something that works here in our school with our kids and our mission statement, then, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So. All right. So it looks like we've got some time, fortunately, and so we can do some data gathering. And, okay. uh, and at some point we'll have, I guess, revised language, then we'll call that our first read. Okay. That sounds good. Does that make sense? Yes. paper today it seems like yeah I get, so I get lost when yeah I, I know I'm like in <laughs> shifting between so we have um, some correspondence um, regarding the school to career uh, programs career fair Correct. On, uh, on April the 18th Wednesday April 18th um, all, well in the morning from 8 30 a.m. to 11 15 a.m. there's uh, a letter from Nancy went to bottom in your packet, as well as a copy of the flyer. There's a flyer, I believe, as well. A copy of that in there. Okay. So, if there's anyone um, who's uh, watching this, e this meeting this evening that um, feels that that uh, that's something that uh, in their business that would be um, good for the business and for the students in particular um, to come. Uh, contact uh, Nancy Winterbottom at, um, at the junior senior high school and um, I'm sure she'd be looking forward to, to hearing from folks.
Yes, the deadline for those people who would like to come and have a table at the um, career fair is April 4th, but please feel free to contact um, Nancy at the junior senior high school or we can get information to her through the SAU here. Next we have a uh, business department. Joan, how's it going over at the school? It's going, uh, it's going well with the ceiling repairs. Um, I gave you a memo tonight, but I guess I'll read it so people in the public can know what's happening. Um, work on the first floor boys and girls lavatories has removed the cracking plaster ceilings and a single damaged floor joist that was discovered has been reinforced to restore its capacity. Based upon the observations of the work progress, the structural engineer has determined that these lavatories are safe and available for use, and my understanding is they opened Wednesday. Yep. Good. They are open. <laughs> we used them last night, didn't we? Uh, the adjacent corridor near Ramp C, uh, which also has a plaster ceiling um, and carries this, the retrofit suspended acoustic tile ceiling, the appearance of the plaster suggests that this is not an Im imminent danger of failure of the ceiling system. This makes it reasonable to permit use, of, permit use of this section of the corridor temporarily until full remedial work can be undertaken this summer. This is going to be a few ceilings we're going to do this summer, the shop area as well. Um, work is progressing in room 106. The sheetrock has been completed and the suspended ceiling was to, to be put back into place, I believe, yesterday. The Aunt and French room are close to being completely sheetrocked. I understand from Bob French that they will be adding overtime now. I don't know if they got off other jobs, that they have more workers coming in. They'll probably be using some weekend time. Uh, the goal is, and the completion date projected is February 29th. Um, in the shop classes, they're installing strapping. And then when that's complete, instead of pulling down the ceiling, they're going to put strapping up and then uh, to secure it. And then when that's complete, they're going to be sprayed with a fire resistance paint and then they'll be able to be reoccupied. And Chris, was the principal, was very anxious to have those rooms um, be available because you can't move the shop class someplace else. There is no place else for them to go. Um, but this is a quick temporary fix, so we can go back in the classrooms. The ceilings will need to be redone over the summer. Um, the, the redone as in the well, shop area will need to be right, uh, right. done if right. 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 It has um, like a wood... I don't know, I'll describe it as paneling. I think it's like a flooring thing that was put up a few years ago based upon the recommendation of I'm not sure, but they put it up. It really needs to come down, and then they will. It's not in danger of falling down, but they're going to pull it down. When they pull it down, they're probably going to see that it may be a that was their solution a couple of years ago to secure the ceiling. So it may have a big project pulling all the plaster down and all that, or it may have a, a shorter fix, and then they will put up a better. Um, uh, surface than paint, you know, painted wood, <laughs> but fire resistant paint. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, the, the pre projected, com projected completion date for all the work is Wednesday, February 29th, which is on February vacation. And that will give Bob French and his custodial staff time, to two, at least two days, to get the building back in order so that when the kids come back from school vacation, they go back, they report back to their usual classroom. So, I mean, I feel good that it happened in a month. Mm -hmm. I, you know, when they said a month, I thought, yeah, right. And then when the bathrooms took longer because they found more damage t to the, um, the, the floor joists, I thought, oh, this isn't going to be good because we're going to be, you know, we'll be done in two weeks. But, you know, they're, they're pretty much on target, and they're, they're moving along quickly. Bob French is very impressed in how fast they move. So, um, unfortunately, I still don't have any estimate of cost. No, the look in my eyes, like how right. much is this going to yeah. cost? I have no idea. It's time and materials. And I asked the uh, Dan Bison if he had any clue. I didn't hear back from him. I'm not sure if that's a good sign. Or maybe he's just not answering his emails today. Um, and I think, you know, we're probably going to absolutely have to hit the um, trust fund. There's not going to be any alternative. Um, I did speak with Jim uh, via email. We talked about um, putting a budget freeze into place. So that will go into effect next week that it's not that they can't spend the money but it's almost March if they haven't spent some of this money you know there's certain contractual obligations we have to keep funded um, but if things can wait we may have them wait we did it last year and at the end of the year when we had some money I told them they needed to go out and buy anything they could buy anything so that's where we'll be um, uh, heat is going to be installed in those two classrooms that don't currently have heat it's, it's expensive 
but we can't continue to, I mean, we're years away, even with approval of everything, to have a new high school, and kids are going to be in these classrooms. So um, they will be installing the heat in those two classrooms over February vacation. It's uh, going to cost around $12,000. We don't have so any that's, options. That's putting radiators in, tying in existing pipes. Plumbing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and we're still whacking away at the uh, at that school, the fire and life safety warn article that we had um, passed last year, which, you know, we've done multiple things. We had the $200,000 appropriated. We have a new fire, um, I don't know what it's called, but it's a fire door that's installed in the kitchen. So if there was a fire, the door would immediately pull down. It's a metal door or steel door or whatever. So, you know, that was expensive too, but that's going to be installed over February vacation. So. That's my building update. <laughs> okay. Any questions? All right. I guess we already had a bit of a policy discussion. Uh, do you have any resignations or leave requests? I do not. Hallelujah. I do have one piece of thing that we do need to work on before we get to the calendar actually has to do with it, so I'll do it at the same time. Okay. Um, we don't have any nominations. Uh, we do have a manifest for February. I will make a motion to approve the total of all manifests in the amount of $762,892.12. I'll second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, calendar item. Um, we have a couple of things. Uh, the first one is, and Ms. Lazarus alluded to, alluded to it, um, we need board approval for a calendar change from March 16th, 2012 at the New Market Junior Senior High School. At this time, there is clear agreement between the teachers union and the administration on the following to use March 16th as a regular school day instead of a professional development day. Staff will not be required to make up the professional development day. All right, do we need a, so we would need to make official board action on that. Correct. So if anyone were willing to make a motion on that. Linda, who's our expert of uh, motion crafter there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is still okay, I will make a motion to use the March 16th uh, as a regular school day instead of a professional development day. Staff will not be required to make up the professional development day. I'll second. Uh, discussion. Um, this is, this affects only the junior senior high school. It's only at the New Market Junior Senior High School. So is, was that clear in the motion? Uh, perhaps not. Because it will be. Yeah, right, but um, add that it's the New Market Junior Senior High School. Right, so it'll, at the elementary school, it'll be. A professional, a professional development, development day. day and no school, no school for, for students. students. So do you want me to do it again? I'm just so yeah they okay so that's the intention of your motion that was my intention and the second yes okay getting awfully official here at this time <laughs> no, come on. any further discussion hearing none all those in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. opposed okay. you have in your packet the letter from the attorney, um, Peter Phillips, Thank you. Yes. Um, based on the um, proposed schedule for the curative <coughs> special school district meeting. Um, we have to schedule a public hearing on the reasons for the special meeting, and it can be scheduled at your convenience on any date between March 7th and March 26th of 2000, March 7th, 2012, March 26th. Um, we just have to make sure that we publish we post the notice. 
Before you do that, though, if you're going to change the school board meeting, you have to. You should probably figure right. that date out first. Mm -hmm. Two yes, dates. that would be oh so logical, That's right. Joan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she's working on. And it's remarkable that oh, there is all this paper in front of me, and I can't find. I know. Find the dates. What I need. Um, so. It sounds like there's at least a couple of us that won't be available on the first for that school board meeting as scheduled. Do we want to move to the 8th and 22nd? It's fine with me. Does that make sense? Do you need the 15th for any deadlines with voting? No, it had to. No. Okay. No, they can do it on the 8th. Yeah, it had to be between the 7th, you just read. No, but between the district, the other voting. Takes but the for the voting yes, the SB2. That's the 13th. That's on the 13th. Right. right. So the only I think the only action really related to that is a early reminder, I guess, that the board would need to be available to sign the um, the voting record. Voting record. <coughs> at the end of that meeting. So you want to move to the eighth. So it sounds like it works for everyone. Yeah. Hopefully it works for Kelly. Okay, so with that in mind, um, the idea then would be to hold a public hearing um, at which reasons for the special meeting shall be explained. <laughs> um, on the uh, March the 8th. So if that's agreeable, I would ask for a motion to hold a public hearing on March the 8th for the purpose of a public hearing at which the reasons for the special meeting <laughs> shall be explained. So moved. Thank you. I'll second that. <laughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and that would, will be at the um, beginning, the first agenda item of that evening's <coughs> meeting. Suggest at 7 p.m. And so this this is quite a yeah. table of dates, um, but um, the. The long and short is we'll have a public hearing on the 8th and <coughs> then we'll have a uh, special meeting to be scheduled um, at 21 days or more after the uh, voting day of the 13th. So we will we'll determine that. Uh, later, but I, I would propose that that would be held on April the 4th. And that the posting requirements of that are all outlined in this document. And this, uh, my understanding is the agenda for that meeting would be the singular item of um, uh, repairing the defect in the posting of that. It would not be a rehashing of content. It would just be something to modify the meeting, if that's the right word. I'm not sure. Um, and if there's other questions regarding what happens, you know, one way or the other on that, um, we can send those towards um, our attorney's office. What I'd like to do, though, um, you know, where that's a, a proposed date for the April the 14th. I'd like to, since the town has a similar defect. April the 4th. I mean, sorry, April the 4th. Okay. Um, I'd like to make sure that we pair that date with the town so that we can do, do it all at once oh, and not once. drag people out on two okay. occasions, if that's at all possible. All right. So it, it says here that Tomorrow, tomorrow, we need to post notice of yep. vote. Penny so has to remove. We know that. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 
take care of it. That's on the to-do list. Excellent. Any other questions on that um, curative special school district meeting? Okay, other calendar items. Anything of note? Um, Saturday we have the uh, chili and chowder challenge at the junior senior high school to benefit the eighth grade trip to Washington, mm -hmm. I believe. Right. Thank you for that I reminder. I think it's five dollars admission, and you get to test all the Everything. chili and chowder you want. So. All right. Sounds good. A reminder that our uh, winter vacation starts Friday on the twenty fourth, and we come back to school on March fifth. Twenty fourth is a full day, isn't it? Correct. Okay. And then the facilities meeting is on <coughs> March the seventh, five thirty in the um, auditorium downstairs in this building. Public is welcome and encouraged. And voting day, uh, seven a.m. till eight p.m. for the town warrant, town. Um, uh, elected officials as well as the school uh, warrant and election of officers so please make a point to come out and, and vote on that date March the 13th I'm sure we'll be uh, talking about that date more and more uh, between now and then um, all right anything else any other business I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.